everybody. I'm back again, and I'm here for Vlogmas Day uh, 16. And today, I am going to be talking about my five five-star memoirs. Uh, so this was, uh, you know, I, I haven't read a ton of memoirs, but a lot of the ones that I have read, I did enjoy. Uh, they were either around a four or five stars. They, they're because I, I mean, I'm not reading a memoir if I don't really like the person that much. Memoirs are really particular. You have to really uh, like that person and be very interested in, you know, their life and more details about them. If you don't really like the person, then I can't see you reading a memoir. So these are the five that really struck me as five stars that I highly recommend. So the first one on my list is Kiesi Layman's heavy oh my gosh this memoir right here you you got to get your mind right and you're gonna be just blown away by how well he writes some of the deepest emotions that he has inside of him so this book it covers what it's like being a young black man growing up, being raised by his very strict, very pretty, pretty brilliant mother. And he goes through lots of different things, sexual abuse, anorexia, lots of problems with his weight jumping up and down and things. And... Also, his writing, his writing, which is very close and dear to his heart, which you can see when you read heavy because he has written that it is so personal and it's so personal that it jumps off the page onto you. You cannot you you, you cannot not be moved by this book. It's it's impossible that you not be moved by this book. It's absolutely a fantastic read. I highly recommend it. Okay, so I'm going to read a little bit about what they say about the memoir. It's in heavy, Layman writes eloquently and honestly about growing up a hard-headed Black son to a complicated and brilliant Black mother in Jackson, Mississippi, from his early experience of sexual violence to his suspension from college to his trek to New York as a young college professor. Layman charts his complex relationship with his mother, grandmother, anorexia, obesity, sex, writing, and ultimately gambling. You got to read this book. It's just when I finished reading, it, I said, oh, my God, to be able to write like that. Like, do I have to have a traumatic life to write like that? Because it's just. It's so good. It's so very good. Get the book. And then the next book I have on my list is Somebody's Daughter by Ashley C. Ford. Now, this is another book memoir that really touched me deep and it discusses Ashley Ford's relationship with her father. So she has had high expectations of her father, but when we're reading the book, her father is in jail and we see how she's being raised uh, with her mother and grandmother and how these two women have two slightly different ways of functioning and we so we basically have three generations living under the same roof and the the, the difficulty it is for Ashley C. Ford to be heard and for her to express what she's feeling and what's going on with her it's just a really memorable memoir and it's a memoir that is very touching it's another one I highly recommend it. I became aware of Ashley C. Ford from following her over on Instagram. And then that led me to picking up her memoir and just, oh. All right, this is what it says. For as long as she could remember, Ashley has put her father on a pedestal. Despite only having vague memories of seeing him face to face, she believes he's the only person in the entire world who understands her. She thinks she understands him too. He's sensitive like her, an artist, and maybe even just as afraid of the dark. She's certain that one day they'll be reunited again and she'll finally feel complete. 
there are just a few problems. He's in prison and she doesn't know what he did to end up there. So yeah, I highly recommend this one. And another thing is this one isn't very long at all. It's fairly short coming in at 224 pages. I highly recommend it. Okay, so the next book on my list is Infidel by Ayan Irsi Ali. <sighs> okay, this book right here, you got to get your mind right. I'm not even joking about that. This one discusses a woman who is from Somalia and we follow her uh, growing up. She's a young girl living with her family in Somalia and then they they move. They move to two different other countries, all of the family, and through all of it, the family is being raised in a very strict harsh way. We're talking beatings, female genital mutilation. There's all of the upheaval that's going on in the different countries that they move to because I think they move at one point to Kenya and then I think another point they're going to move they move to Saudi Arabia. And through all of this, we're we're watching the breakdown of a family and the subsequent escape of Ayan Ursi Ali to Holland. And I tell you, this book is so, I mean, you can't catch your breath in this book. You cannot catch a breath. That's how much stuff happens. It, it's almost hard to believe somebody can survive as much trauma as what is re recounted in the book. But I feel like this is a good book to read because one, you're going to learn something about places that you probably won't ever get a chance to visit. And two, you can see how a person can kind of uplift themselves and move into another realm uh, when, it, when things look absolutely desolate and not possible. I highly recommend this one. It's just a really good read. Harrowing, but a really good read. Infidel shows the coming of age of this distinguished political superstar and champion of free speech, as well as the development of her beliefs, iron will, and extraordinary determination to fight justice. Raised in a strict Muslim family, Irsi Ali survives civil war, female mutilation, br brutal beatings, adolescent as a devout be believer during the rise of the Muslim Brotherhood and life in four troubled, unstable countries ruled largely by despots. She escaped from a forced marriage and sought asylum in the Netherlands, where she earned a college degree in political science, tried to help her tragically depressed sister adjust to the West and fought for the rights of Muslim women and the reform of Islam as a member of parliament. Y'all get this book. Get this book. So, so, so very good. And if I remember correctly, I think there is an audio of this book on YouTube. So check that out if you're interested in the audio. And I think it's read by her, maybe. I'm not, I'm not positive of that, but check it out. This is a really good read. Definitely five stars. Something not to miss. Okay, the next book I have on my list <clears throat> is From Scratch, a memoir of love, Sicily, and finding home. Okay, so this book is by Tim B. Locke. And Tim B. Locke is the sister of Attica Locke. Attica Locke, who writes the mystery stories. Okay, so this memoir tells the meeting of Tim B. Locke with her future husband, who is Sicilian. Tim B. Locke goes off to Italy uh, to learn more about art history. She then meets her husband there. And th this man, this Sicilian man that she meets, she, they fall in love and they go on a journey of being a husband and wife that takes them through so many different ebbs and flows. It is like this love story is so touching and it you feel like you know her because she writes the book so well. You have all of her feelings and emotions are very well described in the book. 
Now, they have done a Netflix adaptation of this book. I personally prefer the book. The Netflix adaptation is a bit more, I think it it, it dwells on the, the overdramatic and doesn't get enough of the good, happy stuff in the story. I definitely prefer also the book because it's more authentic and the Netflix adaptation just feels more and more, it felt more and more fake as I watched it. But I highly recommend it for the excellent writing, for the beautiful love story and the meeting of two people, two cultures, two races, getting together and making it work. Very, very good story. I highly recommend it, even though it is very sad. The next book on my list is Dinner for One, How Cooking in Paris Saved Me. Now, this is by a writer, a young, a young Black woman called Sutanya Dakers. Sutanya Dakers is, a Jama is Jamaican born, but was raised in the Bronx. And she writes this story of how she met a Frenchman in the U.S., they had a long distance relationship for a little while. Then they got together back in France and then they finally, they got married and then they had a separation. And from that separation, we go on this journey along with Sutanya in this book, Dinner for One, to learn how to re-love herself again. And it's just a beautifully written story. And it uh, does talk a lot about the difficulty of once you have a divorce, how you treat yourself is everything. So like if you're not treating yourself well after a divorce, you're most likely not going to get over that divorce anytime soon. And I think with Sutanya's story, that's one of the main things is to treat yourself well. And so what she does is she decides to treat herself well. And then she decides to relearn her neighborhood through cooking. So she will go to her local butcher, her local cheese man, her local vegetable seller and buy her food items in her in her neighborhood. And then she'll go home and cook for herself. And as you know, cooking for yourself when you're alone is always an issue because there are leftovers. What I like about this book is that it it just says, no, that's that's not an issue. The main thing is to treat myself well. So I discovered this book through Sutanya's podcast which I highly recommend, where she talks about food, she talks about cooking, and she invites women on to her show and talks about different aspects of being a woman. And one of the main things is she lives in Paris. So she has people on that talk about life in Paris or working as a chef or lots of different things. I highly recommend listening to that podcast because it's a beautiful podcast, lovely sounds. She has wonderful guests and Sutanya has a nice voice. And I love the sizzling and the wine glasses clinking. I love everything about that. It's like ASMR on steroids. I love it. So <clears throat> let me tell you what it says. Okay, it says, when Sutanya Dakers married her French boyfriend, and moved to Paris at 27, she felt like she was living out her very own Nora Ephron romantic comedy. Jamaican born and Bronx raised, she had never dreamed she herself could be one of those American women in Paris she admired from afar via their blogs until she met the man of her dreams one night in Manhattan. A couple of years later, she married her Frenchman and moved to Paris, embarking on her own happily happily ever after but when her marriage abruptly ended the fairy tale came crashing down around her you will not be sorry about this one and another thing is it has recipes in the back which is really cool soda from scratch it also has recipes in the back 
Highly recommend it. Pick it up. Dinner for one. Go listen to the podcast. You won't be sorry. So that's all I have for you today. Those are my five fave memoirs. Let me know below if you've read any of these or if you're interested in reading any of these. And I'll see you tomorrow with another Vlogmas video. Bye. Thank you.